Have you ever been watching a five minute crafts video and thought to yourself, wow, this is really useful and practical and I want to give it a try? Yeah, me too. I always feel that way. But then reality sets in when you realize you don't have any tools or supplies or motivation really, so you're left feeling like a brown banana. Well, don't be so hard on yourself because that's where I come in. Today, we're gonna scour the video vault of everyone's favorite content farm in search of the most outrageous and ridiculous crafts and life hacks. Then we're gonna turn them into a silly and fun video game. Let's get going. First, we need to figure out what the gameplay will look like. I'm thinking it'll be structured pretty much like Warrior Wear Inc, where the player has to complete a bunch of simple mini games that are thrown at them over and over. But in our game, all the mini games will be based on five minute crafts. Here's a Venn diagram that illustrates the task at hand. On the left, we have the worst five minute crafts. On the right, we have game mechanics like jumping over stuff, movement, clicking the mouse, and moving the mouse. And here in the middle, we have mini games that can combine those elements. Gunther, please commence the search. And while Gunther sifts through the literal thousands of five minute crafts videos to find the ones that suit our very specific needs, we'll start working on the game. For this project, I'm gonna try something a little different this time and build the game with Game Maker, who's sponsoring this video. As someone who mostly uses Unity, I'm really excited but a little nervous to to change engines because it's always easiest to just stick with what's familiar. But some of my favorite indie games have been made with Game Maker, and there's a community of developers who love and swear by the engine, so I knew I'd be in good hands. The first thing we're gonna do is make the title screen. I decided to use the actual 5 Minute Craft logo as inspiration. I intentionally worked at a really low resolution so the game would look a bit pixelated and retro. Next, I imported it as a sprite into what's called a room in Game Maker. Rooms are like different scenes or levels within the game, so in our game, each mini game will exist in its own room. Now we want to make it so that the player will go from this start screen room to the next room when they hit the click here button. Getting this to work in Game Maker is actually really simple. All you have to do is add a mouse event to the click here text that will load the next room when the player clicks on it. Cool. Now when the player clicks here, the game will go to the next room. Next we'll make some kind of background to display the mini games. I'm thinking we'll create an image of a desk with a laptop on it. It's as if the player is watching their favorite YouTube channel. Now we'll import the image into Game Maker as a sprite where it will act as a frame for our mini games. Nice, it sounds like Gunther's found our first craft, so let's check it out. Ah yes, the old tape on face sunglasses hack. I've done this one a few times myself when I couldn't find my shades. Now let's see if we can make this into a mini game. I'm thinking each minigame should follow the same format as the videos. First, there'll be an intro that presents the problem. Second, there'll be a craft that the player has to perform to fix the problem. And third, a conclusion that shows how awesome the solution was. So in this case, we'll draw an intro that depicts someone who doesn't have sunglasses but really wants them. Then we'll make the art for the minigame portion. The player will have to color in this part of the sunglasses within a few short seconds to win. Then we'll draw a win scene that shows the character sporting their custom shades. Now let's drag the art into Game Maker to get it working in our game. For the intro, I just made a simple animation of the girl's tears using Game Maker's built-in sequence editor. The sequence editor lets you use keyframes to animate properties of your sprites. In this case, we're animating the position of the tears. Then for the minigame functionality, we need to come up with a way for the player to color in the sunglasses. First we'll make a bunch of invisible square sprites. Then we'll create a marker sprite and set the tip of it to always be at the location of the mouse cursor. Then we'll put an event on the square sprites that will make them appear when the tip of the marker touches it. This way, when the player moves the marker over the squares, it will look like the sunglasses are being colored in. Cool. Then we'll add a timer so that the player has to do this quickly. Last, we'll import the win scene which shows the victorious outcome. Here's what the whole minigame looks like when you play it through. Nice. Let's see what other crafts Gunther has found. Okay, so the plumbing isn't working in the house. But luckily, we have this plastic bag of water we can hang up and poke holes into instead. How convenient. So first we're going to draw our intro scene. Let's use a camping theme for this one. And because we want to make what's about to happen obvious, we'll put our character in a towel. Now for the minigame. Let's draw a close-up of the bag. Then in Game Maker, we'll put an event on the bag that spawns a little black sprite wherever the player clicks. If they poke 20 holes before the timer runs out, they'll win. And of course, we gotta have a win screen. Cool, our second minigame is up and running. Next up, we're having a nice day at the beach, but uh-oh, we forgot to shave our armpits. No problem, we'll just take the lollipop out of our mouth and pluck the hair away. Wow, who comes up with this stuff? Hmm. 
According to the internet, 5 Minute Crafts is owned by The Soul Publishing, a company started by two Russian-based entrepreneurs. The YouTube channel has been around since 2016 and its audience has skyrocketed to over 80 million subscribers and 26 billion views. The business operates other popular channels such as The Bright Side. Though these channels have undoubtedly garnered widespread popularity and attention, critics claim the content is soulless and in some cases harmful. Some critics go as far as to say the entire operation is a Russian-backed propaganda farm with nefarious intentions. Well, at least I don't have to feel too bad about poking some fun at it. So to introduce the armpit minigame, we'll draw a power lifter chilling at the beach lifting some iron while they enjoy a lollipop. This was the only way I could come up with for why someone would have an exposed armpit like this. Cool. Then in the minigame itself, we'll draw an extreme close-up of the armpit that the player will have to pluck each hair from. To set this up in Game Maker, I created a grid of points that has a total of 15 hairs that can spawn on it randomly. Next, I put an event on each of the hairs that deletes them when the player clicks on them. And then there's an event on the lollipop that puts it at the position of the mouse cursor each frame of the game. And of course we have a windscreen for when the player completes the minigame. Then for our next game, we have what looks like someone getting a haircut with a butcher knife. Hmm, I don't know about this one, it looks kind of dangerous. Alright then, it's going in. First, we'll whip up an intro sequence. Homegirl is sad because she can't afford a haircut. No worries, because she's gotten an idea. For the minigame, we'll set it up to where the player has to click just when the knife is over the dotted line. Then we'll make a windscreen that shows off the fancy new haircut. Excellent. Now we just gotta do this whole process a couple dozen more times, which will probably take forever. But lucky for us, watching all these life hacks has got me feeling pretty efficient. Let's get crafty. Alright, the game is finished. Let's give it a playthrough to see how everything is working. It took me a while to set up the static and the screen shake. Then I had to figure out how to make the camera zoom in and out for each of the mini games. I thought it would make the game feel more dynamic to switch it up. As far as the difficulty, I've played each minigame so many times that I'm not entirely sure how hard they are. My guess is that the player will have to lose a few times before they understand what they need to do in each one. In order to win, you have to beat all 12 minigames without losing. Overall, I think the game came together really nicely and it'll be fun to add to it later. I have to say, I'm really surprised at how easy it was using Game Maker for the project and I can see myself using it more in the future. The built-in event system is really powerful and easy to understand, and the visual scripting system provides a great no-code solution. If you're thinking about just getting into game development, or you've tried other engines and you want something that's quick to get your ideas off the ground, give Game Maker a try. You can try it out for free using the link in the description. I'll also include the project files for this game if you want to see how things work behind the scenes or you want to add to it yourself. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see everyone in the next one.